I am so excited, Tia. This is my first school camp. It'll be so much fun. Tofu, I know you are excited, but you should remember what parents told us. We have to be safe and careful throughout. Tia, I am a big boy and this is my first adventure. I'll be cautious throughout, I promise. I am so happy we are going together. La 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 la. It's a camp, Tofu, so I don't want you wandering around alone at all. We'll have lots of fun, but we'll stick together and be like a team. Like Batman and Robin, like Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel? I haven't seen that movie. It's not a movie, little one. It's a story of two siblings, just like us. I think this is the best time for me to tell you this story. So, sit tight. Hansel and Gretel Once, a poor woodcutter had a son and a daughter named Hansel and Gretel. One day, they get an evil stepmother. One night, the stepmother tells the woodcutter, The kids eat too much. We'll be starving soon. So let's leave the children in the forest and get rid of them. What are you saying? No! But the wife was very persistent and she kept talking until he was convinced. Hansel overhears their conversation. So that night, Hansel goes out and collects shiny white stones. our way back home. Stop crying, Gretel. Hansel, tomorrow we are going to die. What do we do? Don't worry, we will survive. Good night, Gretel. Hansel hides the stones and sleeps. The next morning, the stepmother takes the kids to the forest. Hansel keeps dropping stones on the ground thinking, we can follow these stones home. Children, wait by this big tree. Just sit quietly here and I'll be back to get you. But she never comes back to get them. Let's wait for nightfall, Gretel. I dropped a trail of white stones all the way here. So, with the moonlight shining on them, we could get back home. I am so scared. <laughs> So at night, Hansel and Gretel follow the shiny stones out of the forest. The stepmother was secretly angry. 
A few days later, the stepmother again tricks the children. Let's go have a picnic in the forest. Here, take this bread to eat later. We'll go in the morning. This time, the stepmother locked their room at night and so Hansel couldn't pick up any shiny stones. Next morning, on their way to the forest, Hansel crumbled his bread and left a trail of crumbs instead. Deep in the forest. This looks like a good spot. You both can take a nap here while I go and cut some wood. Hansel and Gretel knew she wouldn't come back again. They slept. and waited for nightfall again. When they woke up, the birds and wild animals had eaten up all the crumbs. Now we will never find our way home. I am so upset for us, Gretel. Hansel, don't lose hope. Let's walk and maybe we find our home. After walking the entire day, they find a small house. Look there! A cookie house! Wow! Oh! The house is made of chocolate with a roof of cake and sugar windows. Come! Come! The hungry children didn't even stop to think. I want a big piece of the cake roof. Yum! Suddenly, they hear a voice. Children, come inside. You seem hungry. I'll make you yummy food right now. The lady was an evil witch. The kids go in the house with her. It's a trap. <laughs> I like to eat kids. I made this house to lure you in. Now I'll fatten the boy up and make a tasty treat for myself. Her eyes were red. She had terrible eyesight, but a good sense of smell. She locks Hansel in a cellar. She makes Gretel do all the housework, all the chores. Hansel and Gretel cried and begged, but she had no mercy on them. Come on, girl. Cook something delicious for your brother. He should be fat enough to be cooked by the end of this month. A week passed. 
Hansel ate delicious food. While Gretel was always hungry. Every morning, the old witch went to Hansel's cellar and shouted, Show me your fingers, boy. Let me check how much fatter you've gotten. But Hansel would always stick out a little bone for her to feel because the witch couldn't see very well. She was furious that Hansel was staying so thin. One day, she lost her patience and shouted at Gretel, I don't care anymore. I'll cook thin Hansel today and eat him anyhow. And start the oven. Gretel had no choice and she started doing what the evil witch told her. Now get in and see if the water is boiling enough. How can I get inside the oven? Please show me so that I can check the water. Stupid girl. What is wrong with you? It's so easy. You just need to step here and... Ah! Gretel cleverly pushed the old woman in the oven and shut the door. The vicious witch burned to a crisp. Gretel rushed to the cellar and set Hansel free. Hansel, my dear brother, the witch is dead. Now let's run out of here and find our home. How happy they were. While running out of the house, they saw wooden chests all over in the witch's room. They were filled with gems and gold. The children filled their pockets with as many gems as possible and left the house. Hansel and Gretel walked for a few hours when they got to a bridge that they knew well and was close to their house. Look! Father! Father! Hansel and Gretel could finally see their father at the porch looking miserable because his wife had died. My dearest children, I'm so happy you both are alive. I am sorry for letting you go. The three hugged and precious gems started to fall out of Gretel's pockets. Both the children emptied their pockets in their father's lap. They told their father about the evil witch and how they got her treasure. Oh my God, I am happy my kids came back safe. I will never leave you alone now. Finally, they could have a carefree life and lived together, happily ever after. Ooh, witches are scary. We are about to reach the forest camp very soon. Don't leave my hand when we go hiking in the forest. I want us to be like Hansel and Gretel. 
I promise not to go anywhere alone. Does this forest have a cookie house or a witch, Tia? Tofu, it's just a story. Hansel and Gretel shared an adventure like a team. Don't worry about any witch. It's just a camp. I hope we find a cookie house like Hansel and Gretel. Cookie house, yum! That sounds wow! I am hungry now. Give me the chocolates from the bag, Tia, please. The boys in my class are very mean to me. They are so tall and big that I always have to listen to whatever they say. I am afraid to disagree with them. Size has nothing to do with courage, Tofu. You don't have to be afraid just because you are short. Have you heard the story of Peter Pan? Peter Pan Once upon a time, in London, the darlings went out to a dinner party leaving their three children, Wendy, John and Michael at home. After Wendy had tucked her younger brothers John and Michael to bed, she went to read a book. She heard a boy sobbing outside her window. He was flying. There was a little fairy fluttering around him. Wendy opened the window to talk to him. Hello. Who are you? Why are you crying? My name is Peter Pan. My shadow wouldn't stick to me. Don't worry. Come inside. Peter agreed. Wendy took his shadow and sewed it to his shoe tips. Now his shadow followed him wherever Peter Pan went. He was delighted. Thank you so much. Why don't you come with me to my home? The Neverland. I live there with my fairy Tinkerbell. Oh, what a wonderful idea. Let me wake up John and Michael too. Could you teach us how to fly? Yes, of course. Get them. We will all fly together. And so it was. Five little figures flew out of the window of the darlings and headed towards Neverland. As they flew over the island, Peter Pan told the children more about his homeland. That island is Neverland. All the children who get lost come and stay with Tinkerbell and me. The Indians also live in Neverland. The mermaids live in the lagoon around the island. And a very mean pirate called Captain Hook keeps troubling everyone. Captain Hook? Yes, a crocodile bit off his one arm. So the captain had to put a hook in its place. Since then, he's afraid of crocodiles. 
and rightly so. If the crocodile ever found Captain Hook, it will eat up the rest of what it couldn't eat the last time. Soon they landed on the island. And to the surprise of Wendy, John and Michael, Peter Pan let them in through a small opening in a tree. Inside the tree was a large room with children inside it. Some were huddled by the fire in a corner and some were playing amongst themselves. Their faces lit up when they saw Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and their guests. Hello everyone, this is Wendy, John and Michael. They will be staying with us from now on. Hello Wendy, John and Michael. A few days passed and they settled into a routine. Wendy would take care of all the children in the day and would go out with Peter Pan and her brothers in the evening to learn more about the island. She would cook for them and stitch new clothes for them. She even made a lovely new dress for Tinkerbell. One evening, as they were out exploring the island, Peter Pan warned everyone and said, Hide! Hide! Pirates! And they've kidnapped the Indian princess, Tiger Lily. They've kept her there, tied up by the rocks near the water. Peter was afraid and the princess would drown if she fell into the water. So, in a voice that sounded like Captain Hook, he shouted instructions to the pirates who guarded her. You fools! Let her go at once! Do it before I come there or else I will throw each one of you into the water. The pirates got scared and immediately released the princess. She quickly dived into the water and swam to safety of her home. Soon everyone found out how Peter Pan had rescued the princess. When Captain Hook found out how Peter Pan had tricked his men, he was furious and swore to have his revenge. That night, Wendy told Peter Pan that she and her brothers wanted to go back home since they missed their parents. She said if the lost children could also return to her world, they could find nice homes for them. Peter Pan didn't want to leave Neverland. But for the sake of the lost children, he agreed although a bit sadly. He would miss his friends dearly. The next morning, all the lost children left with Wendy, John and Michael. But on the way, Captain Hook and his men kidnapped all of them. He tied them 
and kept them on one of his ships. As soon as Peter found out about it, he rushed to the ship. He swung himself from a tree's branch and on to the deck of the ship where all the children were tied up. He swung his sword bravely and threw over the pirates who tried to stop him. Quickly he released everyone from the captor's ties. Wendy, John, Michael and Tinkerbell helped all the children into the water where their friends from the Indian camp were ready with smaller boats to take them to safety. Peter Pan now went looking for Captain Hook. Let us finish this forever, Hook. Yes, Peter Pan, you have caused me enough trouble. It is time that we finish this. With his sword drawn, he raced towards Peter Pan. Quick on his feet, Peter Pan stepped aside and pushed Hook into the sea where the crocodile was waiting to eat the rest of Hook. Everyone rejoiced as Captain Hook was out of their lives forever. Everybody headed back to London. Mr. and Mrs. Darling were so happy to see their children and they agreed to adopt the lost children. They even asked Peter Pan to come and live with them. But Peter Pan said he never wanted to grow up so he and Tinkerbell will go back to Neverland. Do visit us sometime Peter Pan. I will Wendy, promise. And he flew out of the window with Tinkerbell by his side. Thank you, dear. I feel much better. The next time the boys are mean to me, I will find a nice way out. Very good, Tofu. Now come, I can see Mom's car right there. John stays with his cousins. Yesterday, he came late to the class and the teacher scolded him a lot. John said his cousin brothers made him finish their course before they let him leave for school. He said they always trouble him and make him do a lot of housework. Oh no! He must feel really bad. John is a very nice boy. He doesn't disobey anyone. He is very nice to his cousin brothers despite the way they treat him. That is very nice of him. We should always forgive people for their mistakes. Have you heard the story of Cinderella? Upon a time, there lived a young girl called Cinderella. Cinderella's mother had died and so her father had married another woman who had two daughters. One day, Cinderella's father went to work and never returned. 
Cinderella was left at the mercy of her stepmother and two stepsisters who made her do all the work of the house. Cinderella, it's morning already. Where is our breakfast? Just a moment, stepmother. I am just bringing it out. As soon as Cinderella had laid the breakfast, the stepmother and stepsister started eating it. Cinderella served her own plate too and was about to eat when her stepsister pushed her own plate away. Yuck! I hate it! Yes, now that you mention it, it really is horrible. Mother, do something. Cinderella, are you trying to kill us? What kind of food is this? But, but stepmother, I have made it the way I always make it. How dare you argue with me? Go and make new breakfast for us. Don't you dare do anything else till we have had our breakfast. And this is what went on in their house every day. The stepmother and stepsisters troubled Cinderella without any reason. But Cinderella loved them still and never ever complained. One day, an announcement was made in the village. Let everybody know. There will be a royal ball at the palace tomorrow night and the king's son, Prince Charming, will marry a maiden from amongst the guests. Everybody from the village is invited. The whole village was excited. Even Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters couldn't stop talking about it in the house. And that is how Cinderella found out about the ball. The royal ball! Prince Charming! The whole village is invited! I will finish my work quickly so we can all go together. Won't it be just wonderful? You! Who said anything about you going? You will stay here and polish our shoes till you can see your face in them. And so with a heavy heart, Cinderella saw her stepmother and stepsisters dress up and leave for the royal ball the next day. Once they had left, she cried bitterly. Suddenly, her room lit up and Cinderella saw the most beautiful fairy she could imagine. She held in her hand a delicate wand. Who are you? Get up, child. I am your fairy godmother. I am here to get you to the royal ball. Really? I never knew I had a fairy godmother. But how will I get to the ball? I don't have anything to wear. You don't worry about that, my child. And so, in just a few minutes, Cinderella was ready for the royal ball. As she thanked her fairy godmother and got aboard the chariot, she received a word of caution from the fairy godmother. Remember to be back home at 12, otherwise the spell will wear off. Soon 
and Cinderella arrived at the palace. As she entered the great ballroom, everyone turned to look who this beautiful maiden was. Nobody could recognize her. Not even her own stepmother and stepsisters. Prince Charming walked to her. May I have this dance with you? Yes, Your Highness. And so Cinderella and Prince Charming danced together throughout the evening. Till Cinderella heard the clock strike. Fairy Godmother's words came back to her. She needed to get out of there before the clock struck twelve. Without saying a word, she tore away from the prince's grasp and ran out of the palace. The prince ran after her. Wait, wait! What is wrong? Why are you running? I don't even know your name. But Cinderella dared not wait or even look back. Her beautiful gown was already turning into rags again. Her hair was coming loose from the perfect bun that the fairy godmother had made for her. She didn't even stop when one of the glass slippers came off her foot and fell in the palace driveway. She ran out of the palace gates and vanished into the darkness on a path that led to her home. Once home, she went back to polishing the shoes that had been given to her and decided never to speak to anyone about the ball. A few days later, two men from the palace showed up at their door. The lady that Prince Charming fell in love with left behind her glass slipper at the royal ball. The prince believes that such a beautiful slipper could fit only his beloved. And so we're asking all the girls in the village to try the slipper. The one whom it fits would be the one the prince will marry. If you have any girls in the house, please ask them to try the slipper. Oh, yes, yes. I am sure it was one of my daughters. The slipper would fit one of them. And so both the stepsisters tried to fit their foot into the slipper one by one. They pushed and pushed but couldn't get their foot in. Looks like it wasn't your daughter's after all. Is there any other young lady in the house? No, there isn't. You can leave. As the king's men made ready to leave, suddenly the door of the house was thrown open. And Prince Charming himself stood there. Who is this beautiful girl in the upstairs window? Madam, you have lied to us. I demand that the girl be called forth and try the slipper. Y yes, yes, but she is only a servant girl. Nevertheless, Cinderella, Cinderella, come down here at once. Yes, stepmother. The moment Prince Charming saw Cinderella, he knew he had found his beloved. He took the slipper from the king's man and slipped it on to her foot himself. 
The slipper fit perfectly in a moment. Cinderella was once again transformed into the beautiful maiden from the night of the ball. Prince Charming took her to the palace with him. He ordered that the stepmother and stepsisters be punished for lying to the king's men and treating Cinderella so badly and rudely. But being the kind-hearted person that she was, Cinderella asked for them to be forgiven. The prince fell in love with her even more for her generosity and they lived happily ever after. Wow, Tia! How wonderful is it to forgive people? Thank you for telling me this story. I will tell it to John too. I am sure he will like it. Okay. Shall we go home now? I think it's getting late. What happened? Why can't you sleep? I don't know. Can you please put me off to sleep by telling me a story? Sure, Tofu. I'll tell you one of my favorite story. The Little Red Riding Hood Little Red Riding Hood lived in a hut near a forest with her mother. She always wore a beautiful red hood while going out. One day, she went to see her grandmother. On her way, she met a wolf. Huh? Hello, where are you going? I am going to see my granny. She lives behind that hill. The wolf got a wicked idea. <laughs> the wolf ran to Granny's house. ate her up and got into Granny's bed. After some time, Little Red Riding Hood reached the house. She saw the wolf lying in her Granny's bed. Oh Granny, what big eyes you have! So that I can see you better. Granny, what big ears you have! So that I can hear you better. Granny, what a big nose you have! So that I can smell you better. Oh Granny, what big teeth you have! So that I can eat you better! <laughs> oh my god! Help me! Help me! Nearby, a woodcutter was in the forest and he heard the scream. He ran to the house just to see the wolf attacking the little girl. He hit the wolf over the head and this made the wolf open his mouth and shout. The granny jumped out. The wolf ah, ran away ah. and the little red riding hood never saw the wolf again.
So Tofu, little red riding hood, was able to save herself and her old grandmother too. Today I am very happy. I met one of my friends who was acting all greedy and selfish in class. So I told him the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin and he soon understood the lesson. Really Tofu? I haven't heard this one. I would love to hear it from you. The Pied Piper of Hamelin Once upon a time, there was a town named Hamelin. The town was beautiful, bustling with energy and wealth. But no sooner the happiness of the town was ruined by a plague. Plague of Rats There were rats everywhere. So much so that the people of the town didn't even have a place to keep a step without tripping over the rats. There were rats of every size, shape, every age and colour. Nothing worked as a remedy. Not even the cats were able to control the plague of rats. Giving up, the authorities decided to announce a reward of 10 bags of gold to anyone who could help to get rid of the rats. One day, a strange looking man came to the town. He was dressed in the traditional dress, but all red in color, with a long peculiar nose and big wide eyes. He adorned his head with a feather in his hat. He went to the authorities and said, Ah, uh, I have a solution for your problem. I assure you that not a single rat would live in this beautiful town. But I want ten gold bags that you have promised as prize. The authorities were not very sure of his commitment, but still allowed him to give it a try as they had no other option. Soon, the strange looking man took out a Pied Piper from his pocket and started playing a very strange tune. Within no time, all the rats started coming out and following him. From every nook and corner of the town, so many rats came out that the whole street was filled with them. Very strangely, the rats started following the Pied Piper who was playing the strangest tune ever heard. The Pied Piper took them to the town's river and entered into it. 
in no time all the rats mesmerized by his tune fell into the river and drowned there were rejoices in the town celebrations all over soon the pipe piper went to the authorities to claim his prize money but since their work was done and they thought that this plague would never return they shun him off and asked him to leave without giving him a single penny what selfish people are these i did them a favor freed them from such a bad epidemic and all they could care was to be greedy and ungrateful now look how i will teach these selfish people a lesson the pied piper took out his pipe once again and started playing another strange tune a tune that no one had ever heard before In no time all the children of the town mesmerized by the music started following the pipe piper The children were so lost in his tune that they didn't realize that they have come out to the outskirts of the town Pied Piper took them to a cave and let them in. He kept playing the tune till all the children were inside the cave. He then closed the cave with a huge stone. Only two kids were left in the entire town. A boy who was hard of hearing and a girl who had hurt her legs so badly that she couldn't keep up the pace with the rest of the kids these two kids went back and told their parents about the pied piper and how he lured all the children into the cave Soon the authorities went begging to the pipe piper and requested him to let their children out This time they promised to reward him with 20 gold bags I don't trust you any longer I want my prize money beforehand Soon he was handed over his prize money and he left never to be seen again the children were freed from the cave and the parents hugged them and cried watching this the authorities said we surely have learned a lesson this man came out of nowhere and saved us from an epidemic All that we did in return was to be selfish and ungrateful. He surely taught us a lesson of not to be greedy and selfish. That night the town rejoiced and celebrated like a festival. It's still said that in the town of Hamelin if you ever go and listen carefully You might hear the beautiful sound of the pied piper. Tofu, I'm so proud of you. You must be a little naughty, but you surely are a good boy. Ha 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 ha.
for your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.